Lilith has just announced the newest infantry rally coming to Rise of Kingdoms and he's quite unique having the infantry conquering smite tree. So today we'll go over his skills, we'll discuss if they're good or not, if he can even be an open field commander because clearly he is meant for rallying and finally we will discuss his possible best pairings both for the field and for garrison. So if you're interested in the new commander, Scipio Emilianus, I probably butchered that, you need to stick around till the end of the video. Now let's start off today's video by going over this new commander's skills and of course we'll start with his active skill. His active skill, he deals smite damage to a target troop, damage factor 2700 and for the next 3 seconds the target takes 20% more damage. That's honestly a decent active skill, everything here is usable on the open field so far. 2700 damage, single target, really powerful, making him take 20% more all damage is also really good. I would say that's up there with one of the stronger debuffs in the game and probably the strongest I've seen on a rally commander in quite some time. So this is definitely quite an interesting active skill and that smite damage factor is definitely going to be quite powerful. I mean 2700 single target damage already off to a pretty good start. His second skill here, Hunt Master, this commander's infantry units gain 20% march speed while outside of Alliance territory, and if he is leading a rally attack, all infantry gain 30% health. So, this is a bit of a da like a downside towards him on the open field here, we're only going to get 20% of the march speed, and we're not going to get any health. So this skill isn't very open field like powerful, and it is giving me quite a sign that's saying he probably isn't good on the open field. He maybe I haven't seen the rest of his skills yet, I'm kind of going here as we read through, but definitely, usually, if they're going to be field worthy on their second skill, both the stats they provide will be used on the open field, but this is definitely not a double stat second skill. Most of this is not for the open field. If he was giving 30% health while on the field, he'd probably just right away, I'd just say he's field usable, but right now, I'm not 100% sure. So let's check out his next skill. His third skill here, Dawn of Rome. This commander's troops deal 5% more normal damage. And whenever he's hit with a basic attack, it has a 30% chance to dispel all health and defense debuffs currently affecting it. And for the next 3 seconds, it will also gain immunity to health and defense debuffs and take 25% less normal damage. That is a really, really crowded skill. But let's just quickly say one thing. That is a very good skill. This skill is open field usable. This skill is rally. It's just good for rallying as well, and it's going to give him a lot of anti-swarm debuffs. We can see right off the bat, he's dealing 5% more normal damage, which means he's literally dealing 5% more normal damage and also 5% more smite damage whenever he's attacked as well. So pretty much whenever you're hitting anyone, you're going to have a 30% chance to remove more health and defense debuffs. So that means Sibio Africanus is not very good against this CPO, and that means as a rally, he's going to be getting rid of a CPO health debuff a lot more often, and he's going to be able to dispel Nevsky defense debuffs, he's going to dispel the Herman defense debuffs, because Herman Prime has some, he can even dispel Tamiris defense debuffs, that is also extremely good. And then on top of that, he's going to gain immunity to these debuffs for 3 seconds, and take 25% less normal damage, which means 25% less smite damage against smite garrisons. This is really just straight off the bat, a really, really decent skill. It's a powerful skill for the open field. It's got a fairly high probability to trigger. It's only got a five second cooldown and it's got good damage reductions and it's got a good effect. This is definitely strong. Is it overpowered? Probably not, but it is definitely strong. Also, dispel effects from his active skill can be prevented by the silence effect and passive skill dispel effects can take effect no matter what. So I'm guessing that means his dispel should work even if he is silenced. And then smite damage and damage dealt by basic attacks and counter attacks does not include damage from ranged attacks. Okay, so these are just two small disclaimers that say his active skill damage technically counts or him taking active skill damage. But whenever he's dealing range damage or getting hit by range damage, he won't be triggering this. So CPO against range commanders isn't going to be too good. But I mean, then there's no big range meta right now. So this is still a decent skill. It's actually pretty unique. It can be pretty game changing. We're kind of going for a bit of an anti swarm here without going for a ton of just counter attacking stats. I mean, he's got some normal damage, of course, and he's got some normal damage reduction, which is obviously very good for getting swarmed. But he is not really looking at just getting crazy counter attack damage. He's not just doing crazy normal damage reductions. 
he's actually shrugging off debuffs here and dispelling them, which we haven't really seen since I want to say like Boudicca and Zulang. So this is definitely quite an interesting combination. And I think this normal damage reduction is definitely going to be great for whenever he's getting swarmed. It's going to make him way more anti-swarm and much more powerful. Now this bot skill here, this is literally a pure rally. If this commander's troop is attacking a city or stronghold, whenever he launches a basic attack, it has a 50% chance to inflict the following effects for two seconds. The target loses 25% attack and defense, and if he's serving as their primary commander, it will also be silenced. Cooldown of five seconds. This is actually a very decent rally, a skill I'm gonna say. You're gonna be doing a very decent passive skill debuff, and then the silence. The silence on a flag is really, really good, and having it on a commander who is not only decent for rallying from what we've seen so far, but is also somewhat anti-swarm, is definitely very nice. So this is going to be a nice skill, and if he gets lucky, it can be even more powerful. One thing to note here, this isn't really going to line up too well with your opponents, just because of the fact that whenever you are inflicting this silence, A, it's two seconds, and B, it's a random chance. So it's not like Guan Yu, where it's guaranteed on his active skill. This is a random chance on a random turn. It can happen on the first turn, it can happen on the fifth turn, but it most likely won't line up as well with your opponent's active skills as it would with, let's say, a Guan Yu. So this is still going to be valuable, and if it triggers at the right times, it can be really OP, but it's probably not going to be as overpowered as a normal Guan Yu silence. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure it is also a second shorter. His final skill here, this is just an expertise skill, tit for tat. Whenever the current target of this commander's troop uses an active skill, he gains 40% rage or rage 40% faster for the next two seconds. I mean, that's decent, just being able to take less skill damage, or sorry, deal more skill damage because you are getting hit with skill damage, and that can help him just get out his active smite damage a little bit quicker and deal that all damage debuff a tad bit quicker as well. So that is definitely a decent skill, and it is going to help a little bit in terms of both open field and also in terms of the garrison situation, because it doesn't say they have to be a garrison for this skill. Looks like they can be pretty much on the open field or in a garrison. So now that we've seen this new CPO skills, what do I think of his open field potential? That's what most people are going to care about. And I don't think he's going to be amazing on the open field. He's not going to be game breaking by any means, but he might be at the strength of a Tarek. That's if I had to really guess, it's most likely going to be around Tarek. I mean, Tarek's got pretty, probably better stats than this commander, but this commander does have a really good debuff on his active skill and a good unique dispel mechanic, plus decent normal damage increase and reduction. I mean, he's, he's not going to be the best. If I was to put him like really similar to a commander, it'd probably be at the level of Justinian, because Justinian is a commander who has a lot of stuff that's reliant on hitting a city, but despite that, he can still work somewhat on the open field. He's not meta by any means, but he can work on the open field, and this new CPO is probably going to be exactly the same. He's not going to be meta on the open field, I'll put that one out there right now, but he's not going to be too bad. I'd say he's going to be weaker than commanders like Gorgo, and definitely weaker than some of the archer rallies, who always seem to be good for the field, so he's not going to be at the level of a Shobani Pal, but he isn't going to be bad on the field per se. He's probably going to be a commander you would run when you look at like four or three infantry marchers, but he wouldn't be in my top two by any means. There are just much better commanders. He might not, he might not even be in the top three. He's definitely a four, maybe in a fifth commander that you would pick up. Otherwise, there are just better options out there. That being said, if you do expertise him for a rally situation, he looks like he'll be perfectly fine and he'll be quite strong. So if you're looking for a rally commander, this new commander seems very good. But in terms of open field strength, I wouldn't really say so. In terms of his best rally combinations, he's a little bit of a weird commander where I'm not too sure what he would go well with. I think the new commander, William, who currently isn't in the game right now, would probably work best with him just because William seems to be a very, very good smite primary commander who's got crazy single target damage and had a decent amount of stats when I did look at his kit. So I think William will be very, very good with this new CPO commander. And of course, Leo Cho will probably work as well if you have a basically more open field dominance because Leo Cho has definitely got much higher damage and he's going to deal a lot more damage, but he isn't as, let's say, tanky and he doesn't have as much single target damage as William does because William can do up to like 3000 something damage, which is insane. Leo Cho just cannot do that in terms of a rally situation. So I would probably say that Leo Cho is not your number one pick with this commander just because Leo Cho has better AoE. He's more of a smite AoE commander rather than a commander who would run in a rally situation. But this commander who they're releasing, the new CPO, is most certainly built for rallying. So 
I wouldn't say that Leo Cho is a number one pick. It's definitely going to be the William. And I think William with this new commander is going to end up being a meta rally. It's certainly going to counter the Eleanor Garrison. I personally haven't seen much of the Eleanor Garrison. I haven't seen many reports of her, but I've heard it's really good in passes. So I think it's going to be more of a pass rally, this new infantry commander, but we may still see it in flags. And it does have some pretty good, uh, at least, things against Gorgo. You've got that normal damage reduction, which can be great against, of course, any smite commanders. And you've got some ways to dispel stuff, like defense debuffs and health debuffs from CPOs or other CPOs, and also from Nevsky. So I do see that damage and that potential in this new commander, and it does seem pretty strong in that regard. Definitely, though, I would say he's made to counter the Eleanor Garrison, and I see that being quite the case. I would see this commander pretty much destroying them because Eleanor is taking less skill damage. Of course, that's pretty much useless. And whenever his opponents use active skills, this new commander is going to be gaining some form of a rage boost and Eleanor is dealing double active skills. I think it's on a third skill here. So whenever we think about it, we are looking at Eleanor Garrison counter mainly. And yes, I don't think Eleanor is the most common flag garrison, but whenever we do see her in flags, I would see this new CPO commander definitely being able to counter her, especially because whenever Eleanor double active skills, this CPO is going to gain a ton of rage and get even more active skills off as well. I would like to say there are some interesting similarities between this new CPO and CPO Africanus. First of all, this new CPO, their active skill was named Africanus, and not to mention he's clearly trying to counter the CPO health reduction, and he's also got a very similar active skill, or well, expertise, sorry, because this original CPO, he gains 30% more rage if the target is silenced, the new CPO gains 40% more rage whenever the opponent throws an active skill. So that's definitely quite a unique comparison. Also, March Speed off territory. Again, that's a very similar thing to the other CPO. And then you've just got all around a lot of health and tanky stats, which can be similar to the new CPO as well. So that is quite interesting to see. Also, we should note that the new CPO does have the Smite talent tree, which is the new talent tree that is coming to the game, which means that there are two commanders with the Smite tree. And that is quite interesting as well. That means we can start to see people running two Smite Commander marches. I think it's going to start to look like, if you're looking for Smite marches, William with Leoture, and then probably this new Commander with a Gorgo primary, or maybe even this new Commander primary and Gorgo secondary. Gorgo is kind of difficult to use. Maybe you'll end up with a Gorgo Leoture, and then this William with this new Commander. That can also work. But I think they probably want to split up those two Smite trees and put one with Leoture and one with Gorgo, just because... The smite tree seems pretty good for smite commanders from what I've seen. So that's definitely quite unique and it is definitely quite an interesting thing to see. Now in terms of release date for this commander, first of all, I think he's going to be in the Mightiest Governor. He is a rally commander. They're almost always in the Mightiest Governor. And we've now seen both of the infantry commanders. And if we go off what happened with the Cavs, they'll come out about a month or so away from now. So don't expect them in the next Mightiest Governor or even the next patch. They may come out halfway through the next patch. They may come out with the next patch and then get taken away, which is what happened with this Belisarius at least. But I don't think we'll see these new commanders, William and also CPO, until a little bit into probably July. Midway through July, I'd say, is when we would see them at the minimum, maybe even towards the start of August, depending on really when Lilith does decide to release them. So there is no guarantee that these commanders come out in July. Even August is definitely possible, and I wouldn't even be super surprised if that does happen. I think that both these new commanders do seem pretty good, but this CPO, because that's the topic of today's video, does seem like a very, very solid rally, like I said, against Eleanor's, and even against some of those Gorgo garrisons, because he seems to have a lot of stuff which can counter Smite. So my overall opinion, not good for the field. I don't think he's going to be meta there. He'll be maybe for four or three infantry marches at the best, and he's not going to be the most game-changing rally. He's going to be great. I don't think he'll be bad. He's definitely going to be in the meta, but he's not going to be rally level of like, let's say, a Shibani Pal, who when he first released was just destroying everything. And he's definitely not going to be rally level of something like Attila and Takeda or Nevsky and Joan, which were just so meta for so long that it's not even funny. So I think that this new infantry commander, good rally, don't get me wrong. Meta rally, probably not. Won't be as insane, but he'll definitely be getting some good trades against Gorgos and some amazing trades against those Eleanor Garrisons. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, please do consider subscribing to the channel. I try to pump out these videos for all these new commanders as fast as possible. I mean, I literally got pinged on my Discord server, let's say about an hour ago, and I'm already recording the video. So make sure you guys do consider subscribing to the channel. I try to get these top quality, fast and efficient videos out as soon as possible. 
for whenever a commander does release or is announced. So if you want to see more commander announcements, whether it be infantry, archers, cavalry, siege, whatever it is, do consider subscribing to the channel. And I always do enjoy making these videos and subscribing very much supports me. Now, I just want to say, yeah, thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.